Today I fucked up by being a woman. For some background before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I'd like to disclose some info. I, 21F work at a research institute. At our institute for whatever reason, the design of most rooms is very open concept, organic, and uses white as the primary coloring for tables and furniture. There is a lot of glass walls and almost all offices are glass floor to ceiling, with an option to use curtains for privacy from the hallways. I assume this design choice as well as the interior decorating decisions were made to reflect a sense of cleanliness and precision, very in line with science and research. My issue is that I happened to be on my period today, and while that is not normally an issue besides the pain and symptoms from my endometriosis, today was something unique. I had a lengthy meeting with a co-worker that I was collaborating with on an experiment, and we settled into an open area in one of the cafe ESC areas of our facility with couches and an espresso machine. Now I knew we would be having this meeting and I changed into a new menstrual pad beforehand to prevent having to get up and excuse myself mid-meeting. About 45 minutes after sitting down, we were both done for the day and rose to leave the area and return to our respective laboratories. However, when I stood I noticed something in the corner of my vision. Somehow, my flow managed to pierce through my pad, underwear, and jeans onto the white, porous, leather couch I was sitting on. A series of large streaked reddish-brown stains were slathered across where I had been sitting. While it was fairly localized, any time I had adjusted in my seat, something I do often, I'm a pretty fidgety gal. It seemed that I was further smearing around my own period product onto the couch. My co-worker saw it as well and it didn't quite click with him what it was. He asked if I had sat in something, to which I said no, he seemingly realized after a moment of staring and mentioned that he had to return to his lab. I however stayed behind. I tried to clean the mess with a wet paper towel from the neighboring bathroom to no avail, then had to put in a request to our environmental health and safety team. As blood is a biohazard and it is in the open, I had to inform them of the incident so a trained professional could remove it ASAP or remove the couch. When I put in a request in our online portal, still standing around with a bloody ass, trying to hide it by leaning against the corner of the room, supporting myself on my shoulders, almost bending backward to avoid smearing my ass on the wall, a biosafety officer called almost immediately. We have about two to three biosafety officers available around the clock in case of lab emergencies. In the online forms, we have there are vague questions about any spills of chemical or biohazardous origin and we submit our cell phone number to be contacted by a safety officer to be given instructions on what to do until the appropriate professional can arrive. I had called them once before months ago when someone had spilled trizzle in our lab. The man who called me in regards to the online report I had submitted, asked me why there was a blood spill, how much etc etc and was inquisitive as to why this spill was not in a location where blood is stored, experimented on, observed or transported through and began to explain to me the importance of keeping blood samples in designated rooms to adhere to safety guidelines. I then had to explain to his man that it was my blood. To which he asked, a bit more frantically, if I was still injured, and if he should contact security in an ambulance. Security is trained in basic first aid and keeps injured individuals company until an ambulance arrives. I then had to inform him that I was fine and explain that it was period blood. After a few extra painfully long seconds of silence, he replied, Ah I see. We will have someone to clean that up soon. I exchanged more info about what lab I'm from and the exact couch location before ending the phone call. I immediately went to the coats room, got my things, and went home, ignoring the fact that I was getting blood on the inside of my long jacket. And hash x 200 b tl. Doctor I bled on a white couch at work, in an open area, and my male co-worker saw it all happen. Who the fuck has all white couches? That's just a sneeze away from being a Rorschach test. I promise I won't write a blood pun. Period. I don't have endo, but a light flow, I know not the same at all. But didn't realize until halfway through my new factory shift that I had bled through my pants and didn't have a sweater to cover it. Didn't want to lose my job so I grabbed a pad out of the vending machine and hoped no one looked close enough at my butt to see the mess through my shift. Lived 45 minutes from work and had a 30 minutes lunch. So there wasn't much I could do without losing the new job. But wait there's more. At the end of my shift I had a flat tire and had to wait for a tow truck for 2 hours. Here's my misery to hopefully make yours lighter. You did the best you could in this situation, don't be too hard on yourself. All that fuss when you could have just flipped the cushion over? S. Oof. Aunt Flo can be such a sneaky witch.
For what it's worth, it sounds like you handled this with lots of grace, which is really hard to do when you're still waking around with blood-stained clothes on and trying to keep composure. Well done. He probably just didn't know how to react without making you uncomfortable. I wouldn't worry about him judging you for it. In your shoes, I would be super embarrassed too for making a mess. I get it. But at the end of the day, a little period blood is no big deal, it happens. I think most guys eventually get in a situation where their girl gets their period during the night so they wake up on slightly bloody sheets or something. Normal stuff. Just sucks. I feel like you could have avoided all this by being a modern woman with a penis. Geez I'm so sorry you had to go through all that, I too would have been mortified. You handled it like a champ though, with my social anxiety I have no clue what I would have done. I also work in a research facility, so far haven't gotten my period that bad yet while at work. Now as I type this. I'm sure tomorrow I'll have the floodgates of hell open and will be forced to leave the country. Today I fucked up by convincing my doctor I'm into kinky shit. Not today, but several years ago I was on the hunt for a doctor who could solve the problem of me bleeding from my bumhole. And not just bleeding. At one point I had a fever, and my digestion wasn't moving along normally. I often felt constipated despite having more than the daily recommendation of fiber. One day in particular instead of a normal poop, I passed a quarter cup of blood. Maybe it wasn't that much but something was definitely wrong. At first I went to a gastroenterologist. He stuck a finger up my bum and told me I had some hemorrhoids. He dismissed all of my other complaints, he told me to eat more fiber. He said that I was bleeding from my bum hole because of all of my pesky hemorrhoids. I continued to have problems, despite the ungodly amount of fiber I was eating at this point. I was still bleeding on occasion and constipated. At some point I went to a surgeon. He listed many complex surgeries he was qualified to perform, and at the bottom of the list was hemorrhoid removal surgery. I decided to ask him if he could remove the cause of my bleeding problem. I should add that I'm female. The surgeon, doctor is hot and male and we are around the same age. He has lovely muscles, tan skin, a handsome face. Not only is he gorgeous AF, he even has freaking medals and newspaper clippings for volunteering his super special surgeon skills in impoverished countries. He has me stripped from the waist, he gloves up, he puts some lube on his fingers, and sticks them into my bum hole as I am lying exposed on the exam table. He is going to find those pesky hemorrhoids and see if they are eligible candidates for removal with his special surgeon skills. This is where several TIFUs occur. Did I mention I have a nervous laughter tick? Because I do, and as he is prodding around my bum hole with his cold lube gorgeous surgeon hands my nervous laughter cannot be contained. I am laughing for as long as he is in my bum, and it is clear that I have made him uncomfortable. He is awkwardly silent for a long time. Then he goes, uh do you need to go to the bathroom? No I'm fine. Why do you ask? I. Touched your poop. He has removed himself from my bum hole and looks at his gloved hand in disgust. My nervous laughter has not subsided. I am a literal mess, my ass and vulva exposed for both the nurse and doctor to see while I'm losing my shit. Emotionally, on the table. My bum cheeks jiggling with laughter. He leaves for me to dress and he returns to the room. He draws a picture of my vulva and bum hole to explain my anatomy to me like I am five years old. He points to his drawing with a pen. This is your bum hole. And this is your vulva. Literally like I am five years old. He points to the hemorrhoids, these aren't severe enough to be removed. He is still looking at me quizzically, suspiciously, like he can't believe that I don't have to go to the bathroom right now. That I have held my poop inside my bum hole just for him to find, as a special surprise. He says that since there are no eligible hemorrhoid candidates for removal, me coming to see him was basically a waste of time. He tells me to go to a gastroenterologist for my symptoms. At this point I am smiling awkwardly and still giggling because nervous tick thank you. What a helpful appointment. Not embarrassing at all I'm all smiles. I'm still smiling when the doctor leaves suddenly, without ending our session with a goodbye, and I dk what to do. This is odd. I stick my head out into the hallway to see him laughing uncontrollably into his hands. Tears are running down his face. I ask if it is time for me to leave his office, and it is. I walk past the receptionist. She smiles mischievously and asks if I want to make another appointment. No, I do not, I say still smiling and walking with my chin held high before heading out to my car, where I cried before driving two hours back to my home in shame of my bumhole and its secret surprise, wishing that it could behave like a normal bum. 
TL. Dr. Doctor thought I was either playing a poop prank on him or I wanted him to give me a kinky anal fingering session due to a nervous tick. Eventually I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and now it's a well-behaved bum. No secret surprises for hot doctors or myself. Q's explosive public diarrhea months later but those stories are for another time. Edit. Oh my gosh thanks for the concerns. For those of you asking if I'm okay. Crohn's causes intestinal ulcers among many other gastrointestinal issues, hence the bleeding. I'm okay now, besides the medical trauma lol thank you. Dude. Doing a rectal exam ends with touching poop 99% of the time. Unless it was specifically requested you'd do a enema or STH your doc has absolutely zero reason of being surprised by that. Serious question. How were you finally diagnosed with Crohn's, and how did they fix it? Are you sure he was a doctor, and not some random dude who wandered in and didn't know how bums work? Or doctor's offices? I mean, please tell me he didn't really use the word bumhole. Can't go into Poop's house expecting Poop not to be home. He was a cretin for that comment. Why was the drawing of the vulva necessary? Did he think you were confusing period blood with butt blood? Before reading the last part one was like. Boy sounds she might have Crohn's like me. The part where a doctor sticks a finger in the bleeding bum and is like, yeah just a anal fissure, for me, just keep doing what you do and it's fine, is also very recognizable. And I am like, but what about the 20 bowel movements a day? Crippling pain? The pure blood poops? That's a hell of a story. This guy sounds unprofessional like heck. What did he expect to find in your butt? Gold? Today I fucked up by glancing in the trash at my wife's house. Too long did not read. I went to the bathroom at my, separated, wife's house. While I was peeing I looked over in the trash bin, one foot from the toilet and saw two used condoms. About a year ago my wife told me she wanted to get a divorce. We had been having problems for a while, but I still loved her, and my eight-year-old stepson. He was my best friend, only six months old when I met him, I raised him, and she was the love of my life. In the months that followed, she would continue to reach out to me and we continued to hang out as a family sometimes. We agreed it would be good for the kid if we could be friendly and keep our relationships going, even if it wasn't the same. As my friends and family expressed concerns over whether that was healthy, I didn't listen to them. I couldn't let them go. I couldn't be the one to give up. I couldn't make the choice to lose my family. Our friendliness continued for months as we dragged our feet to get the paperwork filled out. We celebrated the Milwaukee Bucks championship together. We picked pumpkins and built a scarecrow, had turkey and stuffing, hung the stockings, picked out a Christmas tree, woke up together and opened presents. One month ago, we rang in the new year together. They slept over and I had sex with her. We had done it a few other times over the months. I let myself start hoping things would work out. It would be okay in the end. We were slowly reconnecting, I could feel it. I could see it. I could hear it in her voice as we laid together. That was one month ago. Today I picked up my stepson from school, and I took him over to the house. It used to be our house, now it's just hers. But I hang out with the little guy there after picking him up every Tuesday, and we hang out and have fun until she gets home from work. Every Tuesday. Today, while he was getting the Xbox ready I went upstairs to pee. As I'm zipping up, I glance into the small wastebasket that's next to the toilet. One of those small ones, just large enough to line with a plastic grocery store bag. Sitting near the top, I see two crumpled up condoms and the wrappers. For at least 30 entire seconds I'm thinking, what the heck happened? Was she masturbating and used them for something? Were her friends over and they were playing some kind of crazy truth or dare? I texted her, hey there are used condoms in your trash. She replied back, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I hooked up with somebody Saturday night. I wasn't expecting you to be looking in my trash. As if I had been kneeling there next to the toilet with a flashlight and a magnifying glass just rifling through her trash looking for clues. I went and looked in her nightstand. I know. I shouldn't have done that. It's where we used to keep the condoms, and I was so exasperated I did it. Along with a few more condoms she had a bottle of cotton candy flavored lubricant. Her favorite flavor. You see, I know her very well. We were together for eight years. I know that flavored lube is what she uses for giving blowjobs. I took the little guy to her dad's house and left him there until she gets off work. I just can't stop thinking about it. This guy. Do you think he saw the poster of Spider-Man and Mary Jane getting married that I got her, it's still on the wall. Do you think he thought that was weird? 
Do you think he saw the pictures from our wedding that are still on the wall in the living room? I wonder if he thought my old pillow was too firm? Of course he didn't. He was thinking, this is awesome. I get to bang this hot chick I just met, twice, and she's giving me a blowjob. Bet she never did that for her stupid old husband, that idiot. I just feel, like, the dumbest most naive moron of all time. Edit. She texted me and said it was a thing that just happened during a carefree night out with friends. She said she would have shown me respect and told me beforehand if it was like she was going to look for a serious relationship with someone else, but this was something that just happened. Like, as though she didn't have a choice about it. Update 2. I texted her and said I was ready to talk. She offered to call me, over the phone, on her break from work. I thought, wow, once again I somehow overestimated how important I was to her. She said she has a lot of homework to do tonight and so meeting in person won't be possible. Somehow, against all odds, I still managed to overestimate what I am worth to her. I told her, we can't end an eight-year relationship over the phone. And she then she agreed to meet me tonight at 8.30 p.m. I think you need to let this go and liberate yourself. Have an honest conversation because hoping for the best will get you stuck. I wish the best for you and you deserve the best. This made me so sad to read. No advice, just hugs. Sorry dude, this is a very hard way to find out it's clearly time to move on because she already has and you're that guy she now goes back to when there's nothing else interesting around. Don't beat yourself up for holding out hope. This is a common pattern, but now you know and it would be profoundly unhealthy and unproductive to hold on. I hate what this will do to your stepson and you could potentially still be involved in his life if you adopted him, and perhaps even if not but you will clearly need to seriously distance yourself from her to get your head straight and may never be able to be around her for any substantial period during his childhood as this may be too much to handle. Good luck man and there's more to life than this even if that seems hard to see right now. If you went and looked through her drawers after, seeing, the condom refuse in the trash bin, it kind of reveals you were actually snooping. I'm currently separated myself and if my wife went through my drawers because of seeing evidence after I spent time with an intimate friend, I'd be pretty pissed off. There was nothing wrong with the condom wrappers being there. She didn't do anything wrong. You and she weren't in a defined relationship yet, if it were ever heading in that direction again. This understandably hurt you because you wanted to hang on and return to what you had. Honestly she's likely already moved on and only uses you for fun, which is fine if you only wanted that but you don't, it's time for you to move on. You will be happier for it. You refer to the child as her son so I assume you never adopted him. If you decide you still want to be a part of his life, you should set boundaries with your relationship with your ex. If you have feelings and she doesn't, sex really shouldn't happen. You need to move on man. She is. This clearly hurt you, and I'm sorry for that. Did you expect someone you were separated from to remain celibate, though? Not see other people? It sounds like when you separated, she kept you like a security blanket while she moved on and you interpreted it more as a hiatus prior to getting back together. Did you ever talk about your goals for the separation? Wait she uses lube for blowjobs? Also, I'm very sorry, but it will work out for you thumbs up medium light skin tone. Today I fucked up by not washing my lady bits properly. Dot for years. Life foo actually. When I was younger, I remember hearing on a TV show or somewhere that women shouldn't use soap inside their taco. I misunderstood that and proceeded to never use soap anywhere on my clam. All these years, I only washed it with water. I gave it a good wash with water every morning and every time I took a poop. My partners have never complained about anything foul down there. In fact, they've always been excited to lick the plate. Well today I was down the YouTube wormhole and came across a short by the always informative and the queen OBGYN of YouTube, Mama Dr. Jones. I learned that it is in fact safe to use soap outside, as long as it's not inside. As a 25-year-old, I feel ashamed of myself and wonder how I made it to 25 years of life without walking around and making people around me gag and vomit. Actually, I'm more curious about how my partners managed to ask me to 69 them. Too long did not read. I never used soap and learned how stupid I've been for the majority of my 25 years of life. No washing it with water is good. Soap on the outer areas is good too. Honestly if it didn't seem like there was a problem and you haven't noticed a problem, then I'd say you're good. It sounds like there was never a problem. Do something different now and there might be. Washing it with solely water is 100% fine. If you feel like you need soap, use gentle soap like Dove Unscented Bar Soap externally. 
You're good, no foos here. Meh, it's not a big deal. I don't use very much soap down there because I have versus V-sensitive skin and it has never been a problem. Vulvas and vaginas are supposed to smell like, well, vulvas and vaginas. As long as you're not getting foul odor during daily activities, I think you didn't foo at all. There are people here commenting about only using water, but for me? Nope. I'm definitely using soap on the outside. Sweating during the day, periods, etc. can make things messy and water isn't enough for me in the summer. Bring on the soap. Never put soap inside, but if you want to use it outside there's nothing wrong with that. You're not gross at all. This is the regime I follow, recommended by doctor, because I have very sensitive skin. I clean around my vulva and also my perineum and anus with soap, but just water on my actual vulva. It just depends on your skin. You're not gross at all. If guys, and I'm a guy, were happily eating you out then there really wasn't a problem. You are going to really mess with your floral balance now, though. Fun fact. The vagina is a self-cleaning area and pretty much takes care of itself on that front so long as you don't have something like a yeast infection throwing shit out of whack. If you're practicing regular good hygiene, like wiping well and cleaning around the area to deal with sweat and the like, you're okay. But if you're especially nervous about getting soap too close to your sensitive bits then consider getting one of those, feminine hygiene, brands that pH balance to keep from being harmful.